Neil, we've all just had the uh, the introduction to the soccer ball. And um, how uh, how excited are you all by it? And how much of a of a difference do you think it can make to the to the club overall? We've we've been excited for it for a couple of years now because we first we first saw I first saw it two years ago in Germany on the the pre season tour. Um, we got invited over there, and, and we were shown literally what you guys have just seen. And you know, we we looked at it and thought, you know, is this going to be a gimmick? like a, a fancy PlayStation or is it going to add value to, to the football club and we quickly decided that not only would it sort of interest players from eight years old right through to Timu Puki, you know, the most experienced players, it'll also develop them and improve them and I think in five years time this, with the software developing and how, how clever technology is, it, 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 it's got the potential to go on and on and on again. Um, but already we've seen the, the, the sort of the buy-in from the players, they can't wait to get in there. Uh, you, can, you can see 10-year-olds running past saying, oh, we're in the soccer bot, we're in the soccer bot. You know, they're that keen and as, as young players will, they want to have the best score, the quickest time. But you also, we've also had feedback from like the Todd Canwells who equally are desperate to get in there to see, okay, how do I compare with Lota Mateus back in the day sort of thing or, or whoever's the best in the world, in, in Europe. So I think we're going to get buy-in from everything. Um, the money for me, though, is in the match analysis. So the the games are good, and obviously that will improve players because the more you do it, the better you naturally will get. But when you put in those match situations where it can definitely affect the first team and Daniel and the squad to improve them or to review things or even to preview things for, for upcoming opponents, things like that, if that's going to improve the team, then we think it'll be an excellent investment. So, obviously, time will tell, but I think uh, we've, we've all been very impressed with it and keen to see now how it actually implements into the training programme and plans. So, have you had a go, and is there a penalty setting? I'd love to have a go, but my knees are shot. Um, <laughs> but I wouldn't want to demoralise the players if I were to, so it's probably best I stay out. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, at this stage, then, if we break it down to you, as you say, Tim and Buki, Premier League player. When this is fully operational and things, would it be the sort of that he might be in there once a week or once a month? Or? Yeah, it's to be determined really. It's you know how that will integrate with the first team coaching staff. Um, we we're imagining there's going to be a huge demand for it, so there's going to have to be scheduling around. We've got ten academy teams mm -hmm. who will all want to use it, plus the first team as well. So obviously the first team will take the priority. Uh, the academy will work around that, but how and often it's used will. I really can't give an answer because it's it's literally just been opened and you know we the first team players some of them won't have seen it yet in action so that will have to be put into a plan and I'm pretty sure you know once once the first team staff see it they'll they'll recognise the value of it and then it's it's up to them whether they use it daily weekly or whatever. The soccer bot is part of the whole regeneration of the training centre and we've seen the plans for sort of the next phase published today as well. Uh, where are we at with sort of a time scale and, and hopes on when that might happen and could you just sort of tell us a bit more about how much of an impact that would make for the first team as well? Yeah well obviously you can see the improvements we've already had which has been incredible over the last four years um, and we've outlined the plans for the recovery centre and for the admin block as well. Those are the plans are there as you've seen but whether they get implemented or not or when they get implemented will be determined by which division we're in and finances. Um, Stuart and, and us as a group, we don't want to stop with, with the soccer ball. You know, we're, we're immensely proud with the first club in the country to have one. Again, time will tell. Will everybody have one in two, three years' time or will it just be us? Um, but it's, it's important we don't stop and we, we're at a, a position now where we're actually proud to bring players here, potential signings um, for this, this very stuff and for the future stuff we've said, you know, before you maybe take them down to Carrow Road and show them around. But, we're happy to bring them here now and, and show off what we've got really with, with the pitches, with the, the academy building that we're sitting in now, and obviously the soccer bot and, and the future things. So it's, it's vitally important we don't stop, but as and when it's implemented, will as always be determined by what's happening on the pitch. As someone that's been at Colony for a, for a lot of years, is there a noticeable sort of change in the mood in terms of having such nice surroundings, even down to the sort of, you know, you've got flower beds and herbs and all that sort of stuff. It feels like it's just a nicer place to work generally. The, the proof is always a proof of the pudding's in the eating, you know. You, I judge it by players, how players react, you know. It's, it, it's probably not right to ask me, I've been here a long time. 
what does Ben Gibson think when he comes through the door? What does Josh Sargent think? Gonzalez and Pacheco? Mm. You know, that's what, what I look for. And when they come in and, and are like, wow, you know, we'd heard about it, but that's then, well, we're doing something right here. Um, the people that have been here have seen it evolve and develop, and we're no less impressed and enthused by it than anybody. But when you, when you get a player through the door and a player in for the very first time, and we show him around like we've shown you guys around today, then it's it, it's a uh, it's big element of satisfaction for us when they say this is top top draw. And of course, some of the players we've signed have played for huge clubs. Um, but to, to to see that we're competing and doing the best we can, obviously we're not Chelsea, it's not Man City, um, but from what it was to what it is now, is a huge sense of pride for us all. An exciting few weeks for yourself as well with the uh, change of role and uh, well, I suppose it's been in place. So sort of, the things you've been doing have been in place for a little while now. How uh, how pleased are you to be taking on that role? And as we were sort of speaking about off off mic earlier, obviously your loan job took you away from from actually seeing games a lot of the time. So now you can actually watch Norwich a lot of the time. I can watch Norwich now. Yeah, yeah. I was everywhere but Norwich. You know, obviously with big emphasis on the loan program, getting players out on loan. The key, as we've always said, is monitoring the players, making sure we know what they're doing. And we've got 18 out currently. Mm. Uh, and whereas I would be watching any number of those 18 players on a, on a monthly basis, now obviously that's Sandy's job now, who's, who's taken my role, and I'll be watching the first team, which is great for me, because I can actually see how we're doing now, um, rather than just uh, seeing how the results was. So, uh, but yeah, uh, in terms of to answer your question, very proud, obviously, as I've already said. Um, it's a huge honour for me to be assistant sporting director and uh, obviously going to give everything hope you know it works out and uh, with, I can continue my career here in Norwich City. Obviously a little bit of difficult time for the team and things at the moment, how, how much has the mood, maybe not be lifted that's too much in terms of after a, after a draw but just a, was there a sense of relief sort of palpable oh, relief after getting that result? Definitely 100% you know uh, obviously results have, have, haven't been great for us and you need to start somewhere and, and equally for me what what saw at Burnley yes the point was great the clean sheet was great but it was just the team showed a bit of character mm -hmm. that you know okay everyone's given a stick you know the league table doesn't lie you, you have a look at it you're going to a club that could can bombard you in, um, and intimidate you and they know the formation they know how they play they get the ball in the box and they put you under pressure and hope you'll buck up uh, and it could have happened but pleasingly that's what I saw yeah I was happy with the draw in the clean sheet but I just saw 11 players 14 players whatever it was they rolled the sleeves up had a go and it could have gone either way um, but that's given us a start now it's certainly stopped the how many games is this going to be is it going to be 15, 16, 8 ok that's stopped now but people will go well go on then what are you going to do now because a, a draw is great but you know, to stay in the division we've got to start winning games so but as you rightly say I'm sure you can imagine when you've gone into that having lost the games we had then to, to change it, turn it around, hopefully, or certainly put stop to it, um, was was very sort of was was very encouraging. But obviously, we've got to move on from that now. Mm. And Daniel said some nice things in the press conference on Friday about your relationship and how you can almost be a bit of a sounding board for him because you've been in, in sort of his chair, as, it, as he put it. Um, how um, how strong would you say that relationship is with Daniel? Because when you came into the loans manager role, you were sort of coming back into the club, I guess. For you personally, you almost had to sort of feel your way back into the club a little bit and what it was Alex Neil at the time, wasn't it? What he sort of wanted from you and things like that. But you have a strong relationship with we, We've got a very strong relationship, myself and Daniel and Stuart. Um, and the pleasing thing is that, as, as you've just said there, and I've said this many, many times, uh, but certainly about Stuart Webber, but also about Daniel, they don't think that it's a weakness to ask for an advice or an opinion. Some people would never do that. You know, they didn't think that's... I should know everything, you know, why ask somebody else? Uh, and obviously I'm only too pleased to be a sounding board and, and give them my opinions. But I think it's, I think it's excellent when, when you've got a sport director who's achieved what he's achieved, not only here, but prior to coming here, and Daniel who's achieved what he's done here. Um, they, they openly acknowledge they're always ready to learn and ask for advice. And um, we have a really, really strong relationship. Um, and hopefully that continues for a very long time. Okay, just a couple more for me and I'll let someone else go again. Um, the, I've noticed a few of the players have gone off on holidays and things like that, the ones who aren't on international duty, I've not been given some of these Malou rough, but they put some sort of photos on Instagram. From the club's point of view, was that 
um, uh, sort of allowing the players to do that because recharging the batteries are good at this stage, or is it more that it's just left up to the player? They have their own flexibility on what's best for them. It's I think I think it's left up to them. Um, obviously, the schedule's in place, and that's key. You know, the players who come away on international duty have been given a specific time off. Um, the sports scientists, the medical people, if they need, will be giving them a program if that's needed. If not, then they're quite right to go and, go and put the feet up and, and relax, and, relax and rest because as soon as they come back on, on Monday, whenever it is or whenever they come back from international duty, it's full focus on Brighton. So the, the modern day footballer cannot, cannot go off the rails. You know, some do, probably many do, but you know, we, we know the situation we're in, we know what we have to do and uh, we're quite confident that the players we've got will do it properly. Yeah, I'm sure they are quite <laughs> um, And just lastly, uh, to sort of reflect on your loan role, really, obviously you're sort of handing over the reins to Andy Hughes and stuff at the moment. Um, a few of the players who've gone out this year maybe having to be a bit patient at the moment, like Dan Barden, I mean, Josh Martin's playing a fair bit, but I guess the, the thing that maybe you will have, well, you'll tell me, but um, you may have learned from your time doing that role is that even a bad loan is not necessarily um, a bad experience for a young player. Am I right in this? Absolutely, that? absolutely right. Um, not all, not always necessarily the case, but certainly ones that are going on a first loan, um, and it doesn't work out. I.e., from a point where they don't get in the team or the, 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 it doesn't work out, there's always something you take from that. You think, okay, well, why didn't it work out? And those are the things that you learn. Yeah. Now, if you keep doing it, obviously we've got a problem or an issue, or you're not good enough. Yeah. Um, but certainly players going on loan, yes you want them to play and succeed but uh, the, the, and invariably they always don't, but the ones that don't we, we have a, equally as scrutinised that just as much as how well that the ones that do work um, because if they don't learn from, from a, a bad loan, call it, then, then they're in trouble. Um, tools on the players, we, we give them everything we can, we monitor them as fully as we can, Andy will do that now, we've had a transition period where I've tra helped transition him into the role, but we tell the players, you know, it's, it's all about you, you know, we can do everything, we've got everything in place for you, but on a Saturday, that will determine how well you do ultimately, so go and do it, we'll give you the support to do it and every opportunity, but if, if you're not good enough or you don't work hard enough or you don't put the application and effort in, then it won't work and they're well aware of that, so you hope if it doesn't work for a particular reason, okay, fine, we'll give you that, but don't let it happen again.